love this one. Fail early, fail often, fail forward. Um, you know, it's always a little bit frustrating to me when, when people have a negative relationship with failure. Failure is a massive part of being able to be successful. You have to get comfortable with failure. You have, you have to actually seek failure. Failure is where all of the lessons are. You know, when you go to the gym and you work out, you're actually seeking failure. You want to take your muscles to the point where you get to failure because that's where the, the adaptation is. That's where growth is. Successful people fail a lot. They fail a whole lot more than they succeed, but they extract the lessons from the failure and they use that, the, the energy and they use the wisdom to come around to the next phase of success. You gotta take a shot. You have to live at the edge of your capabilities. You gotta live where you're almost certain you're gonna fail. That's the reason for practice. Practice is controlled failure. You're getting to your limit, getting to your limit, getting to your limit. You can't lift that, you can't do that, you, until you get to the point that all of a sudden your body makes the adjustment and then you can do it. Failure uh, actually helps you to recognize the areas where you need to evolve. So fail early, fail often, fail forward. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day. You know, he's trying, you know, at a point in his life, he's trying to make a trans transformation. He's trying to make a change. I just noticed how many times he talked about the things he liked and didn't like. He, he was talking about his, his needs and his aversions. Basing what you do on what you like and what you don't like is what got you the life you have. Our likes and dis dislikes are based on our parents and based on bad habits. So I was suggesting removing like and dislike from the decision making process and asking yourself, is something right and is something true? For example, somebody talked to you in a way that you don't like. You may not like how the person talked to you, but it's of a greater benefit for you to ask yourself, is what they're saying right? Is it true? So right perception is what is going to get you right actions. Having an experience in this world that is, is enjoyable is gonna be based on right perception, that you, you see things correctly, and then you choose right actions based on that right perception. Just because you like something doesn't make, make it right. Just because something hurts doesn't make it wrong. So I think people mistake likes and dislikes for intuition. I am suggesting that we pay less attention to what we like and what we don't like, and we ask ourselves, what is right? And that's all I'm gonna say about that. So me and Jada was reflecting about love. And I asked her, I said, what does she think was, you know, one of the biggest revelations that she had had about love? She said that you cannot make a person happy. And I thought that was a real deep idea. You can make a person smile, you can make a person feel good, you can make a person laugh, but whether or not a person is happy is deeply and totally and utterly out of your control. I remember the day um, I retired. I literally said to Jada, that's it. I retire. I retire from trying to make you happy. I need you to go make yourself happy and just prove to me that it's even possible. And after we cracked the hell up, um, we started talking about we came into this false romantic concept that somehow when we got married that we would become one and what we realized is that we were two completely separate people on two completely separate individual journeys and that we were choosing to walk our separate journeys together but her happiness was her responsibility and my happiness was my responsibility.
and we decided that we were going to find our individual uh, internal private separate joy and then we were going to present ourselves to the relationship and to each other already happy not coming to each other uh, begging with our empty cups out uh, demanding that she fill my cups and the cup and demanding that she meet my needs it's unfair and it is, it's kind of uh, unrealistic and can be destructive to place the responsibility for your happiness on anybody other than yourself i was just uh having a debate with a friend of mine and we got stuck on the difference between fault and responsibility she kept talking about how something was somebody's fault somebody's fault and i was like it really it don't matter whose fault it is that something is broken if it's your responsibility to fix it for example is it's not somebody's fault if their father was an abusive alcoholic but it's for damn sure their responsibility to figure out how they're gonna deal with those traumas and try to make a life out of it. It's not your fault if your partner cheated and ruined your marriage, but it is for damn sure your responsibility to figure out how to take that pain and how to overcome that and build a happy life for yourself. Fault and responsibility do not go together. It sucks, but they don't. When something is somebody's fault, we want them to suffer. We want them punished. We want them to, to pay. We want it to be their responsibility to fix it. But that's, that's not how it works, especially when it's your heart. Your heart, your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone. As long as we're pointing the finger and, and, and stuck in whose fault something is, we're jammed and trapped into victim mode. When you're in victim mode, you're stuck in suffering. The road to power is in taking responsibility. Your heart, your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone. Taking responsibility, accepting responsibility is not an admission of guilt. Like you're, not, you're not admitting that you're at fault. Taking responsibility is a recognition of the power that you seize when you stop blaming people. It's not like you're letting somebody who wronged you off the hook. Like taking responsibility is an act of emotional self-defense. Taking responsibility is taking your power back. I believe that self-discipline is the definition of self-love that when you say that you love yourself that means that you have behavior towards yourself that is loving it's like you say to yourself hey man look i know you want to eat that pizza and it'll be really good you know but i can't let you eat that man because if, if you eat that pizza you're gonna feel like shit, you know and i i just i love you too much to let you eat that and I think the word discipline has kind of gotten a, a bad name. We think about it in terms of punishment. I'm not, I'm not talking about discipline in that way. I'm talking about discipline in the sense that you, you forego immediate pleasure for the exchange of long-term self-respect. Self-love is when you say to yourself, oh, man, look, I know you and that girl got a real connection. Um, I know y'all vibe, but that's your girl's cousin. So I love you too much to let you do that. Self-love is, hey, look, I know you got a, a, a test on Monday, you know, and I know you really want to go out with your friends and Saturday night you want to go out, but if you fail that test, you're not going to feel good about yourself. You know, I just, I love you too much to let you go out tonight. Self-discipline is self-love. If you wanna be happy, you have to love yourself, which means you have to discipline your behavior. The road to sustained happiness is through disciplining your behavior.
So I do uh, scream to me the other night, hey Will, I wanna be an actor, man. I wanna be an actor just like you. You know, usually people say stuff to me like that. I'm like, yeah, man, you know, you do it. So give them an encouraging word. But I was just sitting in here thinking and it dawned on me, 99% of people that say stuff like that are not willing to do what it takes to make their dreams come true. The Marines have a saying, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. And that's just real. At the center of bringing any dream into fruition is self-discipline. You know, some, something as simple as food and eating it's not about your, your body as much as it is about your mind. It's getting command of your mind to be able to choose actions that are in your own best interest. Every day, we are choosing shit that's not in our own best interest, right? So if the world is attacking you and the world wants to fight you and the world's trying to hold you down, so you're gonna kick yourself in the balls? So you're gonna stop yourself from getting what you dream. Self-discipline is the center of all material success. You cannot win the war against the world if you can't win the war against your own mind.